we're just going to go through some lessons that haven't made it into tutorials because they just don't really match what we're doing the things that we have learned and hopefully it will help you out in your game animation sample game development right, so number one the automatic strafe that you have in your character this can be turned off by going into the blueprints and cbp sandbox and on character input state we can just unhook the default value it wants to strafe and now when you start your game it will run like normal number two the speed that you move is dictated by these walk run and sprint speeds so if we change the run speed then we will change how fast you move now this is a change from normal uh, because normally we would use the max walk speeds but as you can see here the walk run speeds are what we use here so this run speed is now at 100 and if you wanted to change that then you would need to also change the gate so if you added a new speed so like you were going supersonic or something then you would need to find the gate so find everything to do with the gate so we need to change the gate inside our default values as well so content gate you need to add a new type of speed here and then inside here we would need to where we're doing our max walk speed max acceleration you need to add it into here as well or it just won't work so that's number two number three you can still use state machines inside gasp here i have a state machine and if i select play and then press c you can see i'm going to prone and my state machine works fine and then here as well i'm also doing a wall run and that's using a state machine and this works as well but it's not using the standard motion matching i'm really bad at games the standard motion matching stuff is just using a pure state machine system to be able to do what it is and just blends in and out of that state machine number four one four the sound effect system for the game animation sample is different than the normal system it's completely changed so you just need to be aware of that adding in notifies for sound effects doesn't work it uses foley events so i have a tutorial about all foley events and including the sound the sample uh, we give it away for free as you can see i've got all these different surface types that have different uh, surface noises number five line five choosers are a huge thing in the game animation sample they started in 5.4 and they have improved in 5.5 so choosers how to choose different types of damage how to choose different death scenarios how to choose different hit reactions uh, you can manage it all through choosers how to choose different combat it's all done through choosers and those are going to get sort of better and better all of the animations for motion matching are done using this chooser table so getting to know how to use the chooser table and what it does is super important and sort of its limitations as well number six i'm going with six i've forgotten completely what number there is community support out there for game motion sample projects you just need to find it and some of those people are unreal dev op that's doing some stuff in gasp or game animation sample project so we've got uh, Treehouse Bandit, you should check them out. They've got all sorts of different uh, game animation sample projects. Some of it might be 5.4, so you just need to adjust it. And Native Coder, he's doing bits in game animation sample projects. And then Jonathan 
Isaac Sin as well. And we all do different sort of bits and bobs. Uh, so you should check everyone out and sort of give them a like or a follow. They're all good people to look at and follow. And then we've got Clyde as well, who's doing bits for uh, Gaps 5.5. Give them a follow, give them a shout. If you want to learn more about sort of animating and game animation sample, you should definitely check out Free Pete. He's a great, great sound guy as well. And he's done all the game animation sample parkour tutorials and animating in game animation sample project as well. So you should check him out too. So there is help out there. You just need to find it and look for it. This one's a bit of a longer one. It's not sort of a tip, I suppose, or something that you need to completely understand. But the these poses, these pose dense databases, the PSDs, if we look at the ones, their actual, what they need to run. So you can see these run loops from the PSD. And then we open up this PSD. And we can see that we've got a pose search schema. And what that is doing is all of these little dots. So we've got this red dot where it starts. And then we've got these three lines. Well, this is the first sample, second sample, third sample, and then final sample here. This is the heading. And these are the velocities as well. So if I look in the PSSS, the, per, the persis, we've got the data preprocessor. So what type of thing to apply to it? All of these are currently normalized with common schema. The sample rate, the more samples that you have, the more memory they will need. So if you are sampling 60 samples, then it will take more uh, memory. The current sample rate is 30 and i'll show you what that means in a sec then we've got the weight that the trajectory channel has so currently the weight is one that's its bias how likely it is to pick this and then if we look in samples as i said the red one is the minus sample so the first starting point so if we just open this that's this one here and then we've got the three blue ones four blue ones and each of these is a different offset so this is at zero, this is at 0 0.35, 0 0.7, and one. And that's the distance away on the PSD. So here, so there's one just about here, 0 0.35, 0 0.7, and one just here. Okay, and that is the trajectory channel where it's all going. So if you only move in a short distance, you want to close these in a little bit. And then we've got the group channel which is the position, so the green, so that's the for L, for R, that's those two green lines, and then the velocity, which is also those pink lines as well, and then the heading, which is the pelvis. So that white line is the heading, where it's going, currently it's going backwards, but we're facing this way, so this should always be facing the direction that you're going. And then we've got these green lines, which are the placement of the feet, and then the per pink, purple line is the velocity, so how fast these feet are going. Okay, and you can see that purple line changes and swings around a lot. And now the, the animations that are picked here are based on all of these things. So the trajectory, that's the main thing it's going to be based on. And then it's the feet location, then it's the heading and everything else as well. So you can see each of the individual's weights I feel rude talking about people's weight and here we are with the position so where the feet are positioned has a weight of one so that's given a higher priority and where the velocity is is given a weight of 0 0.3 so that's a lesser priority and then the velocity so how fast they're going 0 0.3 and then the heading weight is 0 0.1 so that's given the least amount of velocity it's heading axis is y so where it's going in the direction if we look at the run loops we can see that each of these black dots is a sample so this one has 78 samples so our current thing is sampling 30 out of the 78 that we've got and then deciding which one is next so i hope that gives you some more information 
on the game animation sample. I hope it helps you understand it a little bit more.